Today we're talking about simplifying radicals. Now radicals is just another way of saying what we use as a square root. I prefer the word radicals because radicals include cube roots and quartic roots and other um, bigger roots that we don't, we haven't talked about yet, but it encompasses all of those words. So I just kind of prefer that one. But you'll recall that a square root is the opposite of a squaring a number, an exponent. So for example, if we took a number like, say, 3 and squared it, we would get 9. If we wanted to undo that square, we would simply take each side and apply the square root, giving us uh, 3 is equal to the square root of 9. A couple of things to keep in mind here. Uh, first, negative 3 squared is also 9, because negative 3 times negative 3 would be 9. So therefore, if you were to do the same operation, you would get negative 3 is equal to the square root of 9. So when you take a number and take the square root of it, we expect two answers. Another way of saying that is plus or minus. So you could write 3 or negative 3, or you could just write plus or minus 3. Either would be fine. Another example, if we had, say, the square root of 144, we could apply that, and we would end up with 12, negative 12. Or we could simply write plus or minus 12. Now, those are what we call perfect squares. Perfect squares are numbers that when you take the square root of them, you get another whole number. Most square roots are irrational. Meaning, if you take the square root of them, they don't go away. They just become a large decimal that never turns into a fraction. For example, the square root of 12. There is no whole number that when you multiply it by itself, you get 12. So therefore, this is an irrational square, uh, square root. We can simplify it a little bit, though. And today, that's kind of the main... The main substance of our lesson is how do you simplify something like this? The first step is to break into prime numbers. You will recall that prime numbers are those that are only divisible by one and itself. Some examples include two, three, five, 7, 11, and so on and so forth. Those numbers are only divisible by themselves and 1. So let's go ahead and break 12 into prime numbers. Uh, in my brain, I know that 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So I could go ahead and break 12 into 4 times 3. Now, 3 is a prime number. I'm going to go ahead and circle it. Uh, just to make sure that I, I know that it, that one's done. Uh, but 4 is not a prime number. We can break down 4 into 2 times 2. Go ahead and circle those two numbers. Now I'm simply going to take these numbers and just rewrite them in a row. 2 times 2 times 3 is equal to 12. Those are all prime numbers. Now uh, we could go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So now we have the square root of 2 times 2 times 3. Or if I wanted to write that a slightly different way, 2 squared times 3. Now, 
notice that we have a squared under a square root. We can simply take that and rewrite this to be 2 because the square root of 2 squared is 2. If we do that, though, this part, the 3, has to stay underneath the square root. So that stays. And there, there we simplified it. We've taken it from a big number underneath there to the smallest possible number that we could possibly have underneath a square root. Um, from there, make sure that we always have our plus and minus as part of our answer. We'll do two more examples. Let's go ahead and try the square root of 45. Now once again, let's think of two numbers that multiply together to equal 45. In this case, that would be 9 and 5. 9 breaks down to 3 times 3. I see here, I notice that we have a pair of 3s. So we could rewrite that as 3 squared. times 5 underneath the radical. And once we have the square root of 3 squared, we can simplify that out, and we get 3 times the square root of 5 plus or minus. That was a bad box. I'm going to try again. You don't have to put the dot in between them. The dot is implied. We know that those are multiplied together. Now let's try a little bit of a, of a stranger one. Let's go ahead and try 108. Now we gotta think of two numbers that multiply together to equal 108. The one that comes to mind for me is six times, no, that's, that's incorrect, sorry. I meant to say nine times 12. Now each of these, we can split up into more. We get 3 and 3, and 3 and 4, which can split up into 2 and 2. And once again, I'm going to notice that we've got a few pairs of numbers, so we can rewrite those as squareds. Now something weird that I'm going to do here is you'll notice that we do have three threes, but we only have one pair of threes, meaning I'm going to rewrite this as 3 squared times 3 times 2 squared. The reason I leave that 3 out is because this is a square root, and I want to be able to pull that 3 out. And I want to be able to pull that 2 out, which means we'll have to leave the other 3, this middle 3, underneath the radical sign. Now we're almost done. All we have to do now is multiply the 3 times 2. We get 6 root 3, plus or minus. One more problem I'm going to do, it's slightly different from the ones that we've done so far, but well within our ability, is something like 8 times the square root of 384. Now we've got bigger numbers, and you'll also notice that we have a number on the outside of our um, square roots. So that's fine, we can manage with that. For now, I want to just pretend that it's not there. We're just going to pretend that we don't even see it. Um, I'm not going to erase it because it's still there, but we're just going to pretend uh, it's not there and just deal with the 384 part. Um, I can't think of any numbers that multiply to 384 offhand, but I do see that it's even, so it is divisible by 2. Uh, 384 divided by 2 is... Um, it's going to be 192. Great. Um, once again, I can't think of two numbers that multiply to 192 offhand, but once again, it's even, so I can divide by 2. And we get a 192, that's going to be 96. Ooh, I can't think of two numbers that multiply to equal... 96, 
8 times 12. So that's going to be 3 twos. And we have 2 times 3 times 3. So now let's go ahead and just see how many pairs of twos we have. We have one pair of twos. We have two pairs of twos, three pairs of twos. We also have one pair of threes. I made a mistake, didn't I? Did you catch my mistake? That shouldn't be a two, that shouldn't be a three, that should be a two. Because 12 is not two times three times three. So we have three pairs of twos, an extra two and a three. So we could rewrite that as eight times two squared times two squared times two squared times two times three. We can bump this part out in front, which will get rid of the squared. So we'll have eight times two times two times two, radical two times three. For now, we just gotta do some basic multiplication. Eight times two times two times two, that's the same thing as eight times eight, which is 64. And the part underneath here, two times three becomes six. We add our plus or minus, put a box around it, and there's our answer. As always, let me know if you've got questions.